The first two that I'm going to talk about you should have already been exposed to in your algebra classes. The last one, maybe not. Okay. The first we even referenced when we were dealing with rationalizing denominators and finding conjugates, and that is the sum and difference of terms. So if you have a product that is the sum and difference of the exact same terms, um, if you were to FOIL this out, the first terms give you a squared. When you take your outer product, then your inner product, what's going to happen with those is there will always be exact opposites of each other. They're going to cancel out completely. And then your final product, the last terms, is negative b squared. So rather than going through this whole process, you can just jump right to the result. The sum and difference of terms multiplied together is equal to the difference of those terms squared. All right, so what this allows you to do is if you take an expression, oops, where you have the sum and difference of terms, you don't need to go through and distribute or FOIL. All you need to do is identify the special product form. Take our first term and square it. So 5x squared, we're going to square the 5, square the x always a minus, and then square the last term, 3 squared is 9. And so you get your solution very quickly. You don't have to do much other than plug it into the pattern. Okay, the second uh, special product form that you should have already been exposed to is a binomial square. Okay, so if you have a sum or difference of terms, a binomial, and you're squaring it, again, if you were to FOIL this, your first would give you an a squared. Your outer products would be plus ab. Your inner products are going to be the exact same thing. So once again, this is always going to, your outer and inner products will always be the same values. And then your last term will have a product that is plus b squared. And so again, rather than working through this individually, you can use the following pattern. You take the first term and square it. When you add these two products together, what you're really doing is you're just taking the product of A times B and then you double it. So from this you can just double the product AB and then end with the product of the last term or, or the square of the last term. Okay, so this is your special product form for a binomial square. Once again it allows you uh, to find your answer very quickly. Okay, so if I was squaring this quantity 5x plus 3 I could square my first term, so square the 5, square the x. I can take the product of these terms and double it. So 5x times 3 is 15x. When you double 15x, you get 30x. And then square the last term, plus 3 squared gives you plus 9. And so once again, it allows you to expand it very quickly. You don't need to use a calculator. And usually, you should be able to do it faster by hand than by trying to enter all that stuff in. Okay, now. I give you two different forms. I give you the sum, a binomial sum or, and a binomial difference squared. It doesn't matter. I just use this one rule when I explain it because all the negative signs will take care of themselves. So if I had something like this, 2x minus, let's say, 7, and I square it, the negative signs will take care of themselves following just this same pattern. So my a value is 2x. So I'm going to square that. Square the 2, square the x. Then I take the product of these terms, so 2x times a negative 7. So the negative does carry with this second term. So that gives me a negative 14. When I double negative 14, I get negative 28x. And then square my last term, negative 7, that whole quantity squared becomes a positive 49. And so the negative sign here in this middle term winds up balancing itself out just by going through this process. All right, so these are the two that you should have seen before. Now, I still think it's easiest if you remember this binomial square as being just the first term squared plus twice the product of the terms plus the second term squared. But I do want to point out a pattern of their coefficients really quickly because I'm going to refer to it in just a moment. But the pattern of coefficients for each of these terms is 1, 2, 1. <coughs> Okay, when you look at this pattern, what you can also think of is if I take my first term, a, to the highest power, which is squared, each consecutive term decreases by 1. So this is a to the power of 2. This is a to the power of 1. And last, we have a to the power of 0. I don't even have to write it in there. We do the same thing with the b's moving from right to left. Start with our b, 
as the highest power two, reduce it by one, so b to the first, and then the finally b to the zero, which I don't need to write. And so looking at that pattern, I'm gonna refer to it here in just a moment. I just wanted to explain that it exists for the binomial square. The final pattern that you guys need to be able to uh, manipulate by hand is a binomial cube. And here's kind of, here's how to derive the pattern for binomial cube. All binomial powers can be modeled using Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is created by just adding the lines above at a diagonal. So one plus one is two. When I go to the next line, what's the sum of these two? Three, three, one, one. What would be the next term? Four, six, four, one. So when you look at these patterns, and this extends infinitely down, these all model the binomial powers. So if we look at this first row, which is called row zero, and if I take a binomial to the power of zero, what is any number to the zero power? A value of one, so that's gonna equal one. When I take my binomial to the first power, I look at this first row, these, these are the pattern of coefficients. So I start with my power, a, or my base a to the highest power one, and then reduce it as I move to the right, so this is a to the zero. Do the same thing with the b's moving from right to left. So b to the first, then b to the zero. And so a plus b to the first is just one a plus one b. Again, that makes sense. There's no calculating to that. Let's look at a binomial square, which is the pattern I just looked at. The pattern of their coefficients is one, two, one, okay, based on Pascal's triangle. So I start with my base a to the highest power two, then reduce it each one, a to the first, a to the zero, so I don't need to write it. Do the same with my b's, b squared, b to the first, b to the zero. And that gives me my pattern for a binomial square. Okay. So this pattern is also what's going to allow us to find this binomial cube, which again, I do expect you to know mentally or to have memorized. Okay. But if you don't memorize it, hopefully you can recreate it really quickly using this little method. We just take our first base A, cube it, square it to the first, reduce it in power since we move from left to right. Do the same thing with our B's moving the other direction. B cubed, squared to the first, and then just put plus signs in between. And this right here is the actual pattern for our binomial cube. Okay, so anytime you're given a binomial cube, my suggestion is go ahead and just think. The pattern of coefficients is one, three, three, one. Take your first term, cube it, square it to the first. Take your last term, moving the other direction, cube it, square it to the first your plus signs in between, and that is your binomial cube pattern. Okay, so let's see, take a couple examples of how this would work. Okay, so if we take this binomial cube, okay, the way that we approach this is, again, we start with our coefficient pattern, one, three, Three, one. Notice I leave space to fill in the bases. <coughs> now we can take our terms. Our first term is 3x, so we're going to cube it, square it to the first and then to the zero, so we can leave it out. Take our second term, which is plus 2, and from the right we can cube it, square it to the first, put our plus signs, and now all we need to do is simplify each of these to get our overall answer. So here if I cube the three and cube the x, here I square the three and the x, two times three is six, six times nine is 54 x squared. Here I square the two, three times three is nine times four is 36 x, and then cube my two plus eight. And so that is the expanded form based on the pattern. Okay. Once again, in the book, in most textbooks, we'll give you two different patterns. I never teach two different patterns when it works with just one. So this same pattern here will work with a difference of terms cubed as well. And I would encourage you just to, if you can, think of it in just 
that form instead. So if we took a difference of cubes, or the difference of, of terms cubed, and we applied this same rule, the coefficients of 1, 3, 3, 1, our first term here was 2x, so we're going to cube it, square it to the first. Our last term, the negative sign carries with this, so we're going to take our negative 1 and cube it, square it to the first, put our plus signs in between, and all we do is we simplify and every, all the signs will take care of themselves. You don't have to try to memorize uh, how the signs alternate or any of that, because here if we cube the 2, cube the x, here we square the 2 and the x, but this negative 1 is going to multiply by this. So 3 times 4 is 12 times a negative 1 gives us a negative 12x squared. So again, our negative sign took care of itself here. Here we're going to square a negative 1. Squaring a negative 1 becomes a positive. So we get 2 times 3, which is plus 6x. Again, the negative sign took care of itself. And then finally, negative 1 cubed is a negative 1 times a 1. Again, the negative sign will take care of itself on that final term as well. So that would be the expansion of that binomial cube. Whether it's plus or minus, the pattern is just the same thing.